Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. Today I'm going to go over something quite cool around how you can work out the difference in sales between one week and the previous week. Now you might think with the amazing time intelligence formulas that we have at our fingertips in the DAX language that you would be able to actually work this out easily. Well, it's actually not that easy from what I've discovered because I had to go and try and work this out myself. And um, now the reason being is that the time intelligence calc does not actually give you an option for a week. And so I'll show you with the date add function. Well, the date add function is, is my favorite time intelligence function because it makes time comparison so, so easy. But you've only got day, month, quarter, and year to choose from. So there's no week there. And so unfortunately, no time intelligence calcs really help us here. So we have to actually do all of the uh, filtering ourselves using the actual the filter function actually um, and using some logic around that to actually account for a few things now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how um, I my first go at it and why it was a problem why, why it wasn't actually um, the end solution and then I'm going to actually show you the solution that got me the result that I wanted and by doing that hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about um, not only this particular uh, this particular example how to solve it but also just how to actually utilize the filter function um, on uh, potentially you know custom date tables so a lot of you don't actually work uh, up, uh, work along the standard calendar dates you've got um, a variety of different um, date arrangements that you have to deal with and this would give you some insight around how you're going to actually have to solve those things okay so let's just start from scratch here now Obviously, the, one of the main things, one of the first things you've got to have is you've actually got to have a week number inside your date table. And so I do in my date table. So certainly, you, you've got to, that's the very first thing you've got to do. You, you're not going to be able to do this uh, unless you unless you have it. So if we look at my date table here, you'll see week number. And I've also created this year and week just with a little bit of logic inside of calculated column. Okay, so that's the first place to start, and then when you've got that context, or you can uh, lay layer that context into, a, say, a table, and in this in this case, I'm just starting with my total sales. So that's a pretty simple calc. Uh, if you've watched some other videos, you would have seen me use this over and over again. Okay, so I'm going to show you the first way I did this, and then why it didn't actually work. So I'm just going to create a um, previous. I'm going to call it previous week sales. And I'm going to use calculate here and I'm going to go total sales and then I'm going to jump down to another line and use filter so filter is going to it enables us to put all this logic inside of it and it what that does is it goes and iterates through the table which you spec specify and goes and checks well is whatever we're iterating through is it true or is it false and if it's true then it actually leaves it inside the context um, of the total sales calculation and that's what we ultimately do inside of calculate and so I'm just going to go filter all dates and then I'm just going to jump down so I like to jump down to another line just for my syntax in these formulas and then I'm going to write my logic in here so first of all I'm going to go week number equal to because we want to we want we, we want to calculate sales but we want to calculate it in the week before so I'm going to go well is the week number equal to selected uh, equal to the current week number but I'm going to minus the one right and selected value is a relatively new function in, in DAX and this is great for this type of this type of stuff and so that's going to actually jump back the one week and then I'm going to go and does the year so I'm going to find my year column equal the selected value of the year now you're probably going to see well this isn't going to work because of I'll br just bring this in and you'll you'll quickly see why but it doesn't work because what if we get to the first month first week of the year well we actually get no result here if there's no result here that's fine because this is the first week of the data so obviously there's going to be no week no result there but check this out if we get down to the first week of 2016 we get nothing because it doesn't know what to do when it actually gets to 1 so one minus one is zero, right? And that's that's where it falls over. So this is not going to work. But what will work is not too far removed from here, and uh, and that's and that's how I um, ultimately worked it out. 
So I'm going to go through my solution that did, that did work, and then hopefully you can see how, how you can use similar logic just in a slightly, slightly different way. So in, in, this, in this example, I'm going to use a lot of variables. So this is how I recommend setting out things that become a little bit more complicated. With a, with, a, with a little bit more logic and it certainly makes it a lot easier to write comments and to actually work uh, for not only you but to other people to actually work through the, f the, the formulas that you write. Okay, so I'm going to do a new um, new measure here and I'm going to go sales uh, PY for previous week. Then I'm just going to do a little bit of setup here. So I'm going to write just add in a few variables and go variable and then I'm going to say current month is selected value to the week number so this is going to evaluate for every single uh, calculation okay well what is the current month very similar to what we were doing inside that other formula and then I'm going to go current year and I'm going to go selected value by the year and then I'm going to do one more here I'm going to go var I'm actually going to go max week num for number max week uh, I'll just put full number actually max week number and then I'm going to go calculate max of week so all I want to do here is I want to calculate the max of all of the weeks that are possible so in theory I want this re to return 53 every single time so I'm just going to go and then I'm going to go all dates like so and then I'm going to close it off. So all that's essentially going to do is it's going to return 53, and I'm going to show you how that integrates into the um, into the formula shortly. Okay, so once I do that, we could put some comments here, but I'm not going to. Um, uh, maybe you'd do that at the end of, of this, if this if you actually got this to work. And then I'm going to go if has one value. Actually, I'll put the, I'll put that logic around at the end. So and then how how do I actually solve it? So I'm going to do it slightly different. I'm not going to use calculate in this case. I'm actually going to use sum x here. Because you can do very similar things by utilizing sum x instead of calculate. So it's a good a good good example to actually go through this. Uh, or go through it this way. Then I'm going to go filter all. Then I'm going to go all dates. And so I'm going to put in similar logic to what I did in the last one, but just I'm going to make sure that we sort out that fir the, the first week of the year issue. So I'm going to go filter all dates. And this is where uh, variables also come in and really handy too because now my, my actual ultimate formula is going to be a lot easier to read. So I go, and then inside a filter, I'm going to go if current month is equal to 1. So if, if we are in that, well, sorry, not current month. This is meant to be current week. I apologize. So let's, uh, let's go sort this out. So I'm going to call this current week instead. And then I'm going to go if current week is equal to 1. So if it equals that first week, we're going to go, um, we're going to go, we're going to use this logic. So if the, um, if the week number is equal to the max week number and the year is equal to the current year minus 1. So what that is going to do is going to say, well, if the current week, so if the week in the current context is one, go and find the 53rd week of the prior year. So that's what that logic is doing. So that's going to solve it for us, which is which is which is really really handy. Then if it's not one, then we can use that same logic basically as we used before. And so I can go week number is equal to the current week minus one, and the year is equal to the current year so there's, there's quite a bit going on here but this is this is how this is how seriously awesome you can get you can get inside of um inside of dax if you think about it uh, and then i'm going to uh, round that off so i'm just going to round my filter off which i've done there and then all i've got to do is in here is put my total sales and then i'm going to close that off and then let's see if this works let's see if this works without the if has one value and it actually does so that's so that's great so let's, um, I don't even need to put that other uh, other logic in there that I didn't um, previously, but maybe you do want to do that just in case, um, just in case something does occur 
uh, with um, the you know, any, anything inside this calc sometimes the the totals can actually throw it uh, and that's how you'd solve it with it if it has one value but in this case we don't actually have to which is great um, now let's go and evaluate if this is actually correct now it does look like it's the previous week's sales which is good now the um, the issue was the first week of any particular year okay so let's have a look at this one so it's going to jump back to the 53rd week of uh, 2015 and it does that's awesome so that is now working for us perfectly and then if we jump to this one as well yes it's working perfectly for us there too okay so it looks like we've had some success we've had some success there now potentially there could be an issue if there was literally only 52 weeks so we would need to solve for that but maybe we'll do that for another video because it, again all it would require is just some additional logic to say well if there was nothing on 52 make it 53 uh, sorry if it was nothing on 53 make it 52 so if that was an issue we could solve it um i just i, I think what, what i will do now is i'll just round it off because there um we've gone through a lot in this video and, and maybe we can save some any additional logic for another video. Um, if you want to let me know your thoughts in the comments below, that would be um, that would be great. Really, really um, appreciate that. I'm just going to just whip this into a visual and show you and show you. So we need to get rid of the year here, and we'll get rid of this one as well. And you'll see here now that you actually can see the difference between wow, total sales in the previous week. So that's how you can ultimately do it. Um, hopefully those who are dealing with custom ca calendars uh, can actually uh, understand a little bit around how you would actually solve some of the things that you're maybe actually looking at. Watch out for more videos um, around custom calendars. I think there's um, a requirement for a bit of help out there. So I'm certainly going to um, try and accommodate that. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you enjoy this concept and, um, and can apply this uh, in your own calcs. Um, and hopefully that's, this actually solves um, one of the issues or, or one of the um, calculations that you need to do in your own models. Okay, thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon.